Hi, Diana. Hello. How are you tonight? Pretty good. Good. Thank you for sending me this stuff in advance. It's helpful. <clears throat> you definitely have some challenging problems. Lovely. Uh, I can only guess what GDC means, but I suspect it means no calculator. Right. Okay. Uh, no graphing display calculator. Oh, okay. I had uh, other thoughts what it might mean. Okay. Uh, no graphing display calculator. All right. So, let's want to start with one. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, I'm pretty sure I know how to do one. I'm a little mystified as to one of the clues they give us. But if I let f of x equal to 0, what's the next step here? Um, could I pull out e to the x and e to the 2x so that way it'd be... You could pull out... Did I miss something? I, I don't think I wrote this down right. No, there was a sine x right here. Uh, hold on. Right. Yeah, we can factor out an e to the 2x. Yes. Usually when you can factor, that's a good step to take. I've seen right. very few problems where factoring was not the thing to do if you could do it. Right. Now what? Um... Well, you can easily solve uh, e to the 2x equals 0. What is x? x would have, well, wait. In other words, oh. can e to the 2x be equal to 0? I don't think so. No, there's no value of x that makes e to the 2x equal to 0. In other words, whenever you have a positive number raised to an exponent, it can't be zero. Right. Okay. So, so we're left with setting that equal to zero. Right. Okay. So I'm going to set with me. Right. Now what? Uh, well, it says given that tangent of pi over six equals 1 over root 3. Yeah, I'm a little confused by that. That's saying the tangent of 30 degrees is 1 over root 3. We knew that. They didn't need to tell us that. So I'm not quite sure how to use that clue. However, let's square both sides and see if that helps. Wait, tangent is sine over cosine, right? right. So I could, the problem is, is that we're solving for a variable x here, and they've told us the tangent of pi over 6. It might come in handy. Let's, let's work through this problem the way I know how to do it, and then see if that information is helpful. Right. The next thing I would do would be to square both sides. All right. To get rid of that 3. Well... More importantly, I mean, with more me. importantly, we're going to get sine squared and cosine squared. And the key to solving trig functions is to get it all in the same function. Right. So, uh, uh, you can use the meaning of life. Uh, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Okay which means sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. Right.
Now we have an equation that is all in cosine and easily solved. I think easily solved. Let's see what we come up with here. We get, yeah. So we get 3 equals 4 cosine squared of x, cosine squared of x equals 3 fourths, cosine of x equals square root of 3 over 2, plus or minus. But they've restricted our domain from 0 to pi. So we only have to consider the first two quadrants. And what angle is that true of? In other words, I, I don't really need to, I guess I need to know that uh, them telling us the tangent of 30 degrees is equal to 1 over root 3 merely reminds us of that triangle. So if cosine of x is equal to root 3 over 2, what angle are they talking about? 60 degrees. Be 30 degrees. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse? Right, right. Okay. So x would be 30 degrees or what? The plus or minus is important. 270. Where is tangent negative between 0 and pi? I mean, where is cosine negative between 0 and pi? Second. From second. From, yeah, second quadrant. Um, so the equivalent to that is 150 degrees. In other words, the cosine of 30 is positive root 3 over 2. The cosine of 150 is negative root 3 over 2. Right. Okay. Is there any step there that you don't get? No, I'm, I just don't like unit circle stuff. Well, that's, okay. well, that's good to know. Well, we can work on that sometime if we have time. Uh, it's yes, and I have trouble good, remembering. It's pretty good to be a master of the unit circle. In other words, you want to be able to know what any trig function of any angle in the unit circle is if it's a multiple of 30, 45, or 60. In other words, if I say what's the tangent of 210, you should be able to figure that out without a calculator, without a GDC. Okay? Right. So okay. if you can't do that, we should spend some time and I'll, I'll show you, I'll teach you how to do it. It's actually quite simple. Just memorize groups of three things at a time, this being one of them. That's one of the triangles you need to memorize. The 45, 45, 90 is another. But once you memorize those two triangles, then you can pretty much figure out the trig function of any angle that's a multiple of 30 or 45 or 90. Okay, now the key they gave us here was the tangent of pi over 6, which is, notice is 30 degrees, was 1 over root 3. I suppose that information was given to us so that we knew this triangle here. Or maybe it's to help us determine which quadrant it's in. Because with the x equals 150, tangent would not be positive. Ah, ah, well, no, hold on. They said the tangent of 30 degrees was 1 over root 3. They didn't say anything about the tangent of 150. Oh. Okay. The tangent of 150 is negative that. But... When I solve this solution and I get down to this step right here where it says cosine squared equals 3 fourths and I take the square root of both sides, I need this plus or minus here. 
right. which means I'm going to have answers in the first and second quadrant since they restricted my domain to be first or second quadrant. So I'm not exactly sure why they gave you the tangent information if, if it wasn't to just tell you this triangle. I mean, if, if anybody would expect you to have that triangle memorized by now, it would be the IB program. So I'm not sure why they gave you that. We didn't need it as long as we knew that triangle. I don't know, maybe it was just some way that he thought of There that. might have been. There might be, and I'm just not seeing it. Um, I suppose I could substitute for cosine x here. Uh, what's that? Uh, tangent equals sine over cosine. So cosine equals sine divided by tangent. So I could put sine divided by tangent. I think what he was meaning to do. Yeah. What What do you think? Since in our formula packet, he has the tangent of theta equals the sine of theta over cosine of theta. Right. So maybe like sine of pi over six over cosine of pi over six equals no one over root three. Root. Believe it or not, I wrote that down on my piece of paper. When I got your packet here, I was looking at it and I was trying to answer that. And that was the first thing I did was I wrote sine of pi over six over cosine of pi over six equals one over root three. But that didn't really enlighten me. Like that, that just seems a tad bit too complicated than what is necessary. My solution, or? Yes. Possibly. I don't know, to be honest with you, how he wants you to use tangent in that. Um, probably the best thing we can do is go on. In other words, I don't need that information to solve the problem. Uh, but what I do need to solve the problem is knowledge of this triangle. And that information, because I can't use a calculator. In other words, right. I can't take the inverse cosine of root 3 over 2. So by telling us that tangent of 30 degrees is 1 over root 3, they're giving us this triangle here. Okay. And then that triangle allows us to figure out what root 3 over 2, that has to be the right. cosine of x. So I'm going to suggest we move on. Because we got some hot problems here and not a lot of time to cover it. Um, that was a, a little bit of a mystery, how he wanted you to do it using that. Perhaps there's a simpler way there. I'm not sure. I am not knowing. Number two. And I, I can figure out number two on my own. Okay, good. That's an isosceles triangle. As long as you can figure out what angle that is, drop a vertical from O to the base, and then use your tri Actually, trig functions to figure out that length. Questions? Uh. In other words, if I... No, just what I have, um, what I was thinking is I could figure out the area of the, of the triangle by figuring out the angle of the arc and then you know, by figuring out the area of the triangle. And I can do that with uh, area equals one-half times A times B times sine of C. Okay, we're going to use that in problem three or four, one of them for sure. I don't know that I need that here. In other words, I know that 1.8 radians is 103 degrees. Okay, that's easy enough to come up with. I know that this is an isosceles triangle, so that's 3.9 and that's 3.9. And I know that if I drop a vertical, it bisects that angle, so that now each of these angles is 51 and a half, and whatever the extra decimals are. Now I can just use trig functions to calculate what it is from A to this point, double it to get the distance from A to B. 
Wait, how did you figure out that 1.8 1 1 is 103 degrees? When we're converting radians to degrees, we multiply by 180 over pi. Remember, the pi has the radian. Right, right. And we want to lose the radians and end up with degrees. So 1.8 times 180 divided by pi, uh, my calculator gave me 103 degrees. All right. Once I know that angle, then I can solve this triangle easily by just dropping the vertical, only because I know that it's an isosceles triangle. And I know that the vertical will split AB. Okay, now once I have this triangle here, I can solve for that distance x. The sine of 51.5 degrees equals x over 3.9. I can solve for x. AB's length is 2x. I don't think they would, uh, he wants it in X. I think he wants exact numbers. No, you can solve for X. In other words, I, the sine of 51.5 degrees equals X over 3.9 from this triangle that I've circled, which means okay. X equals 3.9 times the sine of 51.5, and that's a number you can get out of a calculator. I see we can use a calculator on this problem. Yes. Okay. So we can solve for x. 2x is the length of AB. Okay? Okay. Okay. Let's look at part B. Find the area of the shaded region. All right. Part B I can do no problem okay. since I know how to find the area of a... Right. That's just a, in other words, if you can find the area of the whole circle, well, this white part is whatever percentage 103 divided by 360 is of the area of the circle. So you would just subtract off that area from the area of the whole circle, and you would get the shaded portion. Shaded region right. problems are always subtraction problems. Always. I, I, one out of a hundred doesn't have to be solved with subtraction, but can be. All right. Number three. Number three, I ended up with this triangle. It's an 86 degree angle. That's 36. This is 25. I haven't drawn it to scale. And they want you to calculate x, correct? Yes. In other words, their first, their first question is draw an accurate picture of the problem. Right. OK, now we have a triangle that can be solved using which law? Um, In other words, how do we solve this triangle at this point? It's not, you either got two choices, law of sines or law of cosines. Can we solve it with law of sines immediately? Um, no. And no. The reason is, is that in order to use the law of sines, you have to have one of the relationships in full. In other right. words, you have to either know an angle and its opposite side. You can't begin to use the law of sines unless you know that. This right. triangle, we don't know that. Right. We don't know. We've got 25, we've got this side, we've got this side, but we got this angle. So we have side, angle, side. That's a law of cosines problem. Right. So we can use the cosine rule. Right. Um, having so you can solve for x. x using the law of cosines. 
right? So x squared would equal 25 squared plus 36 squared minus 2 times 25 times 36 times the cosine of 86. Notice that everything on the right side of the equation is a number. Thank goodness. So x is going to be the square root of that number. In other words, there's no variables on the right side. Okay. So I don't know how important it is for you to come up with. I'm sure you need the number for your, your paper. But as far as you and I are concerned, I think we're better off moving forward. Do you not agree? Yes. Rather than coming, I know you know how to come up with X here. Right. All right. So complete the diagram, show everything, find X. So we did that problem in full, correct? Yes. Okay, let's go to the next page. A Ferris wheel problem. Lovely. Well, once you do a few of these, they're not that hard. Um, the key is setting up your grid. Well, let's start again. First of all, we know that the height of this Ferris wheel can be defined by a sinusoid function. Correct? Correct. So the height as a function of time is going to be some a sine or cosine of b times some x minus a phase shift plus d. So if we can come up with this function, then we'll be able to tell the height of the Ferris wheel at any time. In other words, it wants us to know the height after 10 minutes, after 15 minutes, and then down here after each of these. So we need to come up with that sinusoid equation. Right. So what's A? Um, oh, yikes. Remember that A is always the maximum minus the minimum divided by 2. And that D is always the maximum plus the minimum divided by 2. Okay? So, A is... Well, if we consider the highest point to be 100 feet off the ground and the lowest right. point to be 0, then A is 100 minus 0 divided by 2. A is 50. D is 100 plus 0 divided by 2. D is also 50. What is B? It says it takes one revolution, 20 minutes. Um, well, B is a period. Okay, B is 2 pi over the period. Right. And what are they telling us the period is? So the period... The t wait, yeah, they're telling us that the period is 20 minutes? Yes, exactly. So I can substitute 20 minutes here. which makes B pi over, pi over 10. So we've got a lot of our equation. Height okay. based on time is equal. Now here's the tricky part. And this really is the tricky part of these word problems. Which function goes from low to high, goes, starts at its minimum, and 
goes to its maximum one half period later. Is that the sine um, function? Is that the cosine function? Is it the negative cosine function? Is it the negative sine function? Technically, it could be sine or cosine. Well, let's not put a phase shift. In other words, if we can eliminate a phase shift, we're better off. You're right. right. We, could, we could use sine or cosine, and we could use phase. In other words, there's an infinite number of answers. But if we try to come up with the simplest one, so here's the negative, negative cosine, cosine curve. Negative cosine curve starts at its minimum and rises to its maximum from the get-go, which is exactly what happens on this Ferris wheel. If you got in on the Ferris wheel right here, you're starting at the minimum, zero height, and you're right. gradually going to a height of 100 after 10 minutes, one half of a period. The same thing that this negative cosine curve does. Starts at its minimum, goes to its maximum in half of a period. So, I'm going to use negative cosine curve. And I know that B is pi over 10. Now, Given that I'm using a negative cosine curve, there is no phase shift. Right. But there is a vertical shift. That's D. So there yeah. is our function that fits this model. And like I said, there's I could use a sine with a phase shift. I could use probably a cosine with a phase shift. I could use lots of different formulas. But this is the simplest one because there's no phase shift. Now, when you've come up with this, it's always a good idea to test a couple of points. We know what the height's going to be after 10 minutes. What is it? Have to be. 100. Okay. So if I plug in, um, let's see, there's a, a T here also that I forgot to write. Okay. <laughs> there's our function. If I plug in 10 minutes, for t, well then I have minus 50 times the cosine of pi, well that's minus 1, plus 50, right. that's equal 100. Okay, so it fits for that point, our curve does. And now just to be comfortable, let's plug in a time of 20 minutes and make sure that our height is 0. Well, if I plug in t equals 20, I've got cosine of 2 pi, which is positive 1. So that would be minus right. 50 times 1 plus 50. That's equal to 0, which is what we want it to be. I am now very comfortable we have the right equation to model this. Right. And there may be other ways to come up with it. I can't be sure that I'm teaching you the same exact method that your teacher uses. No, he he did the same way, okay. except he found the equation in part D. Okay. Right. I noticed that part D asks you for the equation, and right. I'm a little curious to that. In other words, there must be some other way to figure this out that I'm not aware of. To me, to figure this out, I would come up with the equation first. Now maybe right. maybe he wants you to realize that we know it's 100 feet after 10 minutes, and we don't need the equation to tell us that. Right. What's the height after 15 minutes, and we don't need the equation to tell us that? Right. What is it? Uh, 50 meters. Okay. So that's probably what the way they want you to answer I and II is just by figuring out that that thing's going to be up there after 10 minutes and right there after 15, 45, 15 minutes. Right. Okay. So, 
Now we go on to part B, and it says let h of t be the height of p after t minutes. Some values of h of t are given in the table. Okay. Show that h of 8 equals 90.5. Well, see, doing it my way, where I come up with the equation first, I can answer all of these easily. In other words, once I have the right. equation, then this table makes perfect sense. And h of 8, I just plug in 8 for t and come up with a number. And I'm sure it'll be 90.5 and with h of 21. So what exactly he's doing here, I'm not 100% sure. IB definitely has a different way of teaching, and I'm beginning to gain respect for it. I am. I'm beginning to like what I see. But I'm not <laughs> sure. Well, for a long time, I really didn't. I thought IB went out of their way to make these things more confusing than they need to be. But now I kind of get the idea that they want you to progress through a problem step by step. In other words, they don't want you to come up with this equation first. They want you to come up with it last. Right. So, showing that h of 8 equals 90.5 without knowing the formula. be honest with you, I'm not sure how we're going to do that. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, I'm not, sure, I I'm not sure how they want you to reason from this table how to come up with h of 8. I have no clue. <laughs> Let me just look down a little bit. Graph, sketch the graph of h for 0. 40. Hold on. Um, given that h, and then part d, given that h can be expressed in the form h of t equals a cosine of bt plus c, find a, b, and c. Okay. Um, well, one way we can figure this out, other than the way that I did, is to come up with three equations and three unknowns, right? In other words, if I, he's telling me that this is the equation here, well, he's, I, I have what h of t is based on three different values of t, so I can come up with three equations, right? Let's, let, let me just, right. I, mean, I know we're kind of out of time here, but um, hold on a moment. Let me do it this way. In other words, I know that zero equals a cosine of 0 plus c from the first row. I know that 2.4 equals a cosine of 1 plus c. And I know that 9.5 equals a cosine of 2 plus c. Well, I really only need two of these equations because I only have two unknowns. Uh, right. Oh, no, hold it. There's a B here, and there's a B here, and there's a B there. So there's my three equations and three unknowns, and 
I could come up with A, B, and C from just using algebra and solving a system of three equations. Right. So I can solve for D based on this table here. <clears throat> now how I solve for these two before I've come up with D, I'm not sure. I just, I'm not sure how. I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask him later. Yeah. Um, I think actually the more important part of this problem is the recognition that if the Ferris wheel is going counterclockwise, then you are starting from its minimum point and going to its maximum point. That tells you its negative cosine function. Right. If you were getting on right here, in other words, let's say they had a platform where you had to climb up steps and you got on the Ferris wheel right there rather than at the bottom. Then we would be getting on at the midpoint going to a maximum. That's a positive sign function. Right. Without a phase shift. In other words, you always want to choose whatever gives you the least amount of phase shift. Well, if I was getting on right here, I would be going from the zero, the midpoint, to the maximum. That's what a positive sine curve does. So I would know that I was looking at a positive sine function instead of a negative cosine function when you get on down at the bottom. If I was getting on right there, then I could use a positive sine function that's been phase shifted by 45 degrees. See why? Yes. Okay. If I was getting on down here, I could use the negative cosine function shifted by 45 degrees. Phase shifted. Right. So these Ferris wheel problems have a lot to do with where you're getting on, and they can be really complicated. They can build a platform that's right here that's, you know, 30 degree angle from there, and then you have to use whatever that phase shift is. All right, let's put this problem to bed. Let me just take a quick look at your last page here. Um, we're not going to be able to cover this. Uh, without taking more time, and I'm perfectly willing to take more time if you need it, but I'll let you make that call. Uh, not today. Okay. Um, I, I can figure out six by myself. I, I can do that. Okay. Um, About five. I believe I can since I have a lot of... Yeah, when you're given the equation of the line, three-fourths is the slope. Right. Well, that means the tangent is three over four. Right. So that's right. the value and of the tangent of theta. And in terms of figuring out, once you get that, you can figure out what theta is. Once you get right. theta, you can figure out the sine of two theta. Now, uh, again, I don't know that they want if they want you to use the trig identity, because sine of two theta is two sine theta cosine theta. Yes, they he, they would want me to use the trig, ident trig okay, identity. Okay, but even if you use the trig identity, you've got to know what sine theta and cosine theta is. Right, and I can figure that out since I can use a calculator there. Okay. Um, right. You know six. Seven is the one you were kind of talking about where you can use that area of a triangle to solve right. this. In other words, to solve for this angle, given the area, then just use the area of a triangle sine definition. Right. And you'll be able to solve for that angle. Right, so I, I, can, I can do the last page. Okay, and once you solve for that angle, now finding A, B is a question using the law of cosines. Right. All right. All right. And I will let you go. <laughs> I'd right. love to sit in on Thank one you. of your classes one day, because I am kind of curious as to how they teach some of these things in, in the order that they do. Um, 
It's mysterious to me, and I'd be curious to learn it. Huh. All right. Sometimes it's intriguing sometimes. Yes, it is. I'll talk to you next time. All right, bye. Thank bye. you.